it's Chef Bay. I'm so excited to have you here on my YouTube channel. I am the author of this amazing cookbook, Cook, Kilo Go Vegan. I'm also the host of the Plant Remedy Podcast. You'll find all things podcast, cookbook, healing, wellness, recipes, all things vegan on this YouTube site. And I'm just so excited to have you here. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below and I will personally answer them myself. And if you wanna find out more about me, you can do so on all these social channels here. If you love this video, I would be so grateful if you could like and comment and subscribe to my channel and of course share with a friend if you think it would resonate with them. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you soon. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Plant Remedy Podcast. It's your host, Chef Bay. I'm so excited to be here. If this is your first time listening to the podcast... I love you. I'm so excited that you're here. I am a professional chef, a cookbook author, a nutrition consultant, a podcast host, obviously, and I reside in San Diego, California, and I'm currently recording this podcast from my office at home. It's like 90 degrees in my office. I've got a fan blowing in my face. We don't have air conditioning, so the struggle gets so real in the summer. I actually like think about when we were writing the cookbook, we were had to write the cookbook in the middle of the summer and it was so hot and they were doing construction on our house at the time and like tearing down our deck and like, it was just crazy and we rent. So like we had no control over the timing of it. It just all kind of happened at once. So every time I'm sweating bullets working, I just think about the cookbook and how much literal blood, sweat, and tears went into the cookbook and how we did the whole thing in the heat of the summer. And it does get really hot here in San Diego. We're so lucky though, because we are right by the ocean. So it drops like 20 degrees cooler than it is even like 20 minutes inland. So I'm always so lucky to live by the beach, live by the ocean. It's just like, oh man, over the summer, all of y'all who are like living in Arizona or the desert or anywhere that it's like super, super hot right now, I feel you it's rough out there. Make sure to drink a bunch of water. I talked about this on TikTok um, last week, but like a lot of times we can get super bloated from being dehydrated. And I know there's like a total fad out there right now, with like all these anti-bloat pills and digestive enzymes and all that stuff. Um, but a lot of times we're bloated because we're dehydrated and yeah, our body holds on to that water retention because it's holding on to the water that it has right? And so you feel so puffy, but when you drink a lot of water, you're able to get rid of a lot of that puffiness. So that's just like a PSA for anyone out there who's dehydrated or feeling bloated and doesn't know what's going on. You might just need some water. <laughs> um, but I'm so excited for this episode today. I'm interviewing Karen Calabrese. She is such an amazing amazingly influential vegan. And it's not just that she's a vegan. She's aged incredibly well. She's so inspiring. She's just like treating her body like absolute pure gold. And she's in her seventies and she looks like she's in her fifties and the energy, the boundless energy that this woman has. I was just sitting here in this conversation in this podcast episode with my jaw dropped, like, oh my God, this woman is so inspiring. And there's just so much that we can take away from listening to her, listening to her story, talking about, you know, aging really well and like loving the idea of aging and not being afraid of aging and looking at our wrinkles as different ways to read your body. She just like goes into so many things that, you know, I think in the Western world, we've been taught like, oh, there's a wrinkle, let's hide it instead of look at it as a sign of what's going on deeper or like, yeah, there's just so many things to take away from, from this episode. And it was just an honor to be able to interview her and to chat with Karen and to just take that time. And I'm just really, really, really excited for you guys to hear that episode, this episode right now. Um, and I also just, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the topic of longevity. You know, I think there's so many silly arguments on the internet <laughs> right now. Um, and I guess there always has been, but like plant-based versus carnivore or like ex vegans or like, you know, there's a lot of just like mishmash, like crazy information and in people's opinions. But the reality is, is what we're looking for. And what I always strive for is longevity, right? Not just for 
myself, but that's like a big one is where it usually starts, right? It's longevity for the self, longevity for your cells and your skin and your gut and your colon and all of these things. Like we're looking for longevity. Like no one's saying that a vegan lifestyle is going to make you live forever, but it could help you avoid cancer. It could help you avoid all these different things. Um, but it's also longevity for the world around us, right? Like longevity for the planet, longevity for animals, like just, and it's not just being vegan. It's, it's learning how to shop with less plastic. It's learning how to use your voice to speak about the things that you care about. And it's just longevity. There's so much like longevity is just this umbrella of so much that we can talk about. And, um, when it comes to this conversation that we're about to go into longevity is just like the key here. It's just how can we have longevity as a person? How can we age well? How can we be excited to age? How can we incorporate different things into our lifestyle so that we feel great when we're 70, right? So that we don't feel old, so that we feel like alive and vibrant and like, you know, nothing can stop us. And I think that's what I really strive for, especially because you know, my grandparents died in their late sixties, early seventies, and they were old. Like I remember thinking about, um, you know, my grandparents and being younger. And I always looked at my grandmother, my, my dad's mom as just being older. Like she, she could barely walk when she got old, like to the end of her life, she had suffered with diabetes and all gout and all these problems. And I just kind of thought that that's what happened. You just, you got old and you just like slowly withered away to nothing. And eventually, you know, we all pass on to the next life or the next thing or whatever you believe in. But there is a sense of like, we don't have to age like that, you know, like it's not, it's not a yes. Like it's not a sure thing that you have to age like that. And something that I was taught from a young age from all my doctors and physicians was like, oh, well, if gout's in your family, if high blood pressure is in your family, if type two diabetes is in your family, you're going to get all those things. So just be prepared. And now knowing what I know now, it's not a for sure thing. Like not even a, like not at all, you know? So it's so much diet related, so much lifestyle related, so much stress related. There's so many factors to it, but it's so inspiring and motivating to know that like you hold the key to your future. You can be an enlivened, older person, you know, you can age with grace and beauty and feel amazing. Um, and there's so many tools that can help you get there. So yeah, it's just inspiring. And, you know, I know my parents are getting older. My parents are in their mid sixties now. And with the idea that like, you know, once you hit 70, like that's it, you know, that scares me a lot because it's just already ingrained in how I think. Um, and I'm, I'm actively changing that narrative within my mind and being like, no, like my parents are predominantly plant-based. My parents have a very non-toxic life. They're active. Like my parents are going to live a long time. And I have to just keep reminding myself of that. And if you don't have parents who are active and eat well, and you're worried about them, I think this is a great episode to send to them for them to listen to, because it's never too late to change. It's never too late to try something new. And and, you know, it's like, what have you, what, what you got to lose? Like, you might as well try it. Like if it's working for so many people, it may work for your parents. It may work for you. Maybe you are the parent listening to this. And so, yeah, there's a lot to just like look forward to. And I'm excited about this conversation because of that, because on this podcast, we talk a lot about the environment. We talk a lot about food issues, which is a lot of stuff that there's not to look forward to, like, to be honest, <laughs> um, but this is a good positive podcast and I'm just really excited. I've said that 17,000 times, but I mean it. I'm happy to be here. I'm grateful for this show. I'm grateful for this opportunity to spread this message and to be here and spend your quality time with you guys. So thank you so much. Before we get into the show, I just want to remind you of the free download that's on my website right now. It's six hacks to heal your cycle with food. It's totally free. It's a little sneak peek of what's coming next. We have in something incredible in store. We have a huge launch coming up and um, this is just like a little teaser, but it's totally free. All you do is go to my website, www.chefbay.kitchen. Um, it'll pop up right there and you can just download the free, the free download, the free six food hacks to heal your cycle. 
I have endometriosis and it's something that I have healed from. I've spent my whole life healing from. And um, yeah, I've pretty much just dedicated my life to learning about this disease, learning about women, learning about periods, anyone with a period, right? Learning about all of these issues that we have. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm trying not to spill too much information about what's coming. But if you're interested, if you do have period pain, if you're struggling, because I have struggled a lot with my period, I needed a deep exhale for that. You're going to want to download this guide and then downloading the guide will also put you on the list, the VIP list to be the first to know early bird pricing of what's coming up. And it's so good. I've been working day and night on it for the last two months and I just, oh, I can't wait. So yeah, again, go to www.chefbay.kitchen. It'll pop right up for you. It's also in the show notes if you just want to click on the link and you can grab that free download. Okay, let's get into this amazing episode. Let's do it. All right, guys, I'm sitting down with Karen Calabrese. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. I wouldn't miss it for the world. (laughs) Any chance I get to help people maybe wake up to a different reality, I'm in it. I love it so much. I'm just like so inspired by so much of your content and just like your energy is so infectious and I feel like your smile just says everything about you so I'm just like so excited to chat and learn from you but how are you so far like how's your day going my day is beyond fabulous you know I have a one of the things that I practice and I think is one of the most important uh, processes of my lifestyle to keep me in balance is I don't look at or touch my phone before 9 a.m mm-hmm. I'm up at 5 in the morning and I have a chance to feed myself and I'm not talking about food, I'm talking about um, meditation, uh, prayer, uh, workout, yoga. This is all about me, that time from 5.30 to nine o'clock in the morning, so that when my day starts, I'm fully fortified, I'm fully fed, and I can take on just about anything, seriously. So that's, I really, especially people in your age group, it's something to think about, that you're pulled and torn in so many directions from the moment you open your eyes sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. and it's kind of, when do you get to feed you to take on what life is going to throw you? Yeah. So I mean, that, thank you very much. Cause I started my day. Oh my gosh. I love that you already said that because I actually have that problem. It's like, you know, I work for myself. I'm an entrepreneur. I have social media, blah, blah, blah. And I have that issue where it's like my alarm will go off or I'll go to like check something really quickly in the morning. And then all of a sudden it turns from like a quick check to like 30 minutes on social media or checking my email. And it actually happened to me this morning. So it's so funny. And I was so anxious. We're meant to hear it. Because I was if you're being as successful as you are with all of this stuff. Can you imagine if you center yourself and feed mm-hmm. yourself? What, yeah. What's going to happen? And the thing of it is, it's like any type of um, any type of transformation and change. You don't necessarily go from A to Z overnight, but set your intention for it. You know, say okay, and maybe it isn't the amount of time I'm giving, and I've been doing it so long, and it, you know, it keeps adding up. But, you know, or maybe it's time in the evening or maybe, but just where it's nothing about you and making yourself number one in your life. Mm-hmm. Because people like that are in this business, so to speak, it's, it, people do want a piece of us. That's what we've come here to do, to share, to help, to help people transform. But how are you going to do it if you fall apart yourself? You know, how are you going to do it if your thinking or your decisions start to get a little off and you don't even realize it because you haven't fed yourself first? So. You know, I'm so glad you heard it and you'll find a way to include it. You know, maybe it's just from, I I think getting up the first thing though, not being pulled away is very important, even if you pick another time to do it. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, my husband like takes my dogs out in the morning. Like he's very amazing, but it's like, I feel like I should start taking on some of these things so that I don't just like dive right into work or into You know, I I heard, I heard the quote, like create more than you consume. And I feel like when you get into the cycle of consuming so much content and news, the news is so intense right now that you become anxious. You don't become yourself. You're just kind of like floating around this chaotic space. And yeah, I definitely have been feeling that a little lately. So I appreciate the the words. I walk my dog with my husband in the morning and I don't turn the phone on. I don't even take the phone. I did start because I wanted to see how far I was walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After I, get, I got a little 
addiction going there with the phone, but which is why I made it so important to do that. So yeah, go walk with your husband. That's the best medicine in the world, being outside in the oxygen, in the sun. That's mm-hmm. what's going to heal you safe more than anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wow. I'm like, okay, podcast over. I got all I needed. (laughs) So amazing. Well, I would just like love for you to tell the audience just a little bit about yourself if they're not familiar with you and your work and who you are. Well, uh, I'm Karen Calgaris and I owned the longest standing raw food restaurant in the country at one time. I was the third one to open. The first one was a Ari Slotham, who's the greatest raw food chef on the planet. Mm. And I learned him. And the second uh, that opened was, I think four guys from Morehouse College opened up a raw food in uh, Atlanta. And then I opened up in Chicago, I think it was 91 or 92. And it was not, it wasn't really heard of, but um, it was like, I started doing wheatgrass. I started changing my life. And I had a lot of challenges to overcome. Uh, that I didn't even realize were challenges because so many, so much of the uncomfortability we live in, we don't even realize we're uncomfortable, you know? So things started to become um, very clear to me. And um, I knew I needed to do something different. My mother died at 47. My grandmother died at 50 and my great grandmother at 60. They all started out my size and I'm the same size I was at 16 at 75. They all started out my size. They became uh, overweight Mm. And which, although it wouldn't necessarily be called overweight in this day and age, because we've moved the bar so far, <laughs> a size, a size 12, 14 was overweight back then, but it isn't necessarily a mm-hmm. you know, overweight now. And um, they all died very young, cancer, diabetes, and all the storms. Yeah. So I knew I needed something different. And I started, my mother actually introduced me to carrot juice. And I started drinking carriages. Oh, I forgot. I wasn't pooping. I didn't go to the bathroom. I was constipated all the time. People don't realize all life processes. If they're not going, they're creating trouble. Yeah. So I had terrible skin. And uh, so my mother started me drinking carrot juice. And uh, I started pooping. And as I started to poop, my, my thinking got clearer too, you know. And I'd love to say that I'm like you people today. You have the internet and Google and everything to say, oh, let's, let's look this up. I don't want to do this. I didn't have any of that. So I really had to rely on my um, God-given vibrational, because we all know what's right. We've just forgotten. We really all know how to take care of this human body that we have. The cells come programmed, everything knows, but we have so many outside distractions and everybody telling us what but I didn't have the outside distraction. So I really had to, and I'm an only child and a loner. So I really had to learn to listen to myself. And uh, I just automatically became, after drinking all the juice, oh, I should add, I'm a bit OCD, not OCD. I, I, I get stuff done. I don't stop until it's done. So mm-hmm. and I don't just, but, so I wasn't just drinking a little bit of carrot juice because I was pooping. I started drinking tons of carrot juice. <laughs> <laughs> My- up and I started pooping and I started thinking that, and I developed a natural repulsion to eating meat. I never said I'm going to be a vegetarian. Mm. These own natural resources took over and I was making chicken soup or something one day and I looked in the pot and it was so repulsive. The bones had separated and you know the skin was floating around. Oh, this is what people look at and think it's normal. Mm-hmm. But some changed in me organically because of all the living juice I was putting. I was probably doing gallons of it every day. And I just developed a natural repulsion. And that took me to being a vegetarian. And then I started doing some reading and I met Dr. Ann Wigmore and I became vegan raw and uh, never looked back. You know, it changed my life. My skin cleared up. Uh, I, at one point I was running uh, three restaurants, two wellness centers. I was writing books. I was traveling all over the world. And, and speaking and lecturing. And so I took myself from being a sickly, constipated woman to, you know, fulfilling a dream. And I'm still fulfilling my dreams at 75. So it worked. And uh, I used to be a model. And uh, so I was making money modeling. And, but I started uh, telling people how to eat or helping them out. And I started these meetings in my home. I called them Learn to Live International. Now you have, uh, you know, meetups and internet mm-hmm. and Zoom. But I had to have people meet up in my house. And it was the third Sunday of every month. I put a bunch of flyers up in the three local health food stores we had at the time. 
And people started showing up in my house. I started with six people and I ended up getting 90 people in my home once a month. I went to a greenhouse and rented some space and started growing wheatgrass. Nobody had ever even heard of wheatgrass. My husband, he is my boyfriend. You'll never get anybody to drink that shit but you. And now you see the whole world. I mean, I'm sorry. You'll never get anybody to drink that shit. No, you can cuss all you want here. It's fine. (laughs) Don't worry. (laughs) And the whole world is, you know, so I just, I've, I've had a very fortunate life in a lot of ways because the right thing shows up at the right time for me and then I act on it but I think the right thing shows up for everybody you just everybody just doesn't learn to act on it and see the good in it no matter what's happening so does that kind of answer my oh so now I'm opening up a new wellness spa I've opened up already I moved to Flossmore and I'm opening up a restaurant next door I mean 40 minutes from the city. My whole life is totally different now. I have a backyard. I'm growing vegetables. I feel like green acres because you have to understand I used to live on the Gold Coast in Chicago, you know, mm-hmm. one of the biggest neighborhoods. And now I'm, I've got a nice little house with a backyard and it's the perfect chapter for this time in my life. So I think it's finding the joy in every moment of your life too. It isn't just the food that you're thinking. It, it's everything. It's everything. It isn't just one thing. So did I answer? question. Yes. I'm so inspired. Honestly, my husband's from Chicago. So, um, just like right outside the suburbs. So I, it's, I'm blanking, uh, Mundelein. (laughs) Oh, sure. I don't know where it is, but I've heard of it. (laughs) Yeah. It's like out, out in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) City girl, You have no idea. I was a city. I lived in a duplex high rise with a glass staircase. So if somebody said to me, Karen, you're going to move to Flossmoor in 2020, and I would have said, what the F is a Flossmoor? I didn't even know anything about any of the suburbs or where I was. And now it's like heaven. I, mm. I, it's, I think of a better place for me to be. Yeah, totally. I've lived in San Francisco for a long time and I was like a, a ride or die city girl too. And now I live in San Diego and it's like much slower and yeah, it just feels like nice to kind of slow down and have space and grow vegetables. And it's, yeah, something I never thought I would do either, but here we are. <laughs> compost, are you composting? I, yeah, I can't compost, unfortunately, but like our next place will compost for sure. Um, so I'm wondering, okay, you opened a raw food restaurant in Chicago and in Chicago, right? Or in Illinois. And so I'm wondering like. Chicago, Illinois, the meatpacking center of the world. I yes. know. So was that like scary to do something so against the norm back then? People, what I think one of the pieces that I have is I never realized that I shouldn't do something till I look back and go, oh, wow. You know, or somebody points it out to me. So it doesn't occur to me. Uh, it didn't occur to me not to open a restaurant. I had never even worked in a restaurant. I didn't have any money. I had to sell jewelry and stuff to do it. I opened up in a burnt out, depressed neighborhood and nobody had heard of raw foods. But mm. for some reason, like a good thing to do to me because I wanted to do it. So I opened up the restaurant and it was, it was awful. The uh, city didn't even know what to do with a juice bar, raw food. You know, they put me through hell getting it open. And then when I finally opened, people would walk by and I'd stick their fingers down their throat because I had a sign that said raw food. And then I changed it to just good raw food. I was invited to be on Oprah and the rest is history. It just, you know, it just kept moving forward. I mean, yeah. I've had tons of acts. I, you know, please don't think that I haven't had to work for where I am. Oh my gosh, of course. One of my places burned down. I put a million dollars into it. Another place I was robbed. You know, I've had my challenges, but everybody does. And the upside is I've had more great things happen to me, just like the negative. So I concentrate on the great things. Yeah. It's all about that mindset. Okay. I was going to ask you this anyway, but what was it like meeting Oprah like you got the call like Oprah wants to meet you what was that like only because it's always been something that I've you know fantasized about so I just this is more of a personal question than for our listeners (laughs) (laughs) Um, about women aging how about how women age and I was 50 that was considered aging at 53 well let me tell you about my experience I'm such an Aries and do my own thing so they, uh, back then you didn't, they sent a limo for you and everything. And the producer called me the night before because what they had done was they took, there were five of us that were gonna be on, but they put me on by myself. And there were five of us that were gonna be on and they took us shopping for clothes because they wanted you to look a certain way. And they took us, they had a makeup artist and I was just beside myself because the clothes they wanted me to wear is nothing I would wear. Mm. You know, <laughs> 75, I wouldn't have worn it at 53. 
and the makeup artist, I already had a makeup artist because I, you know, I was still modeling to a degree and I had a makeup yeah. artist. And the producer called me and she says, so are you all ready for tomorrow? And I said, you know, quite honestly, I'm not happy because I don't like the clothes you bought for me. And I want my own makeup artist to do my, <laughs> I'm not like I'm a diva, nobody had heard of me. And I'm telling her, I said, well, bring three outfits and we'll let you, you know, we'll let you choose. And I did, and my makeup artist did my makeup. And you can look at it, it's in my Instagram, the, the clip of me coming out. Yeah, I um, saw that. Wearing leather pants, because I wasn't into it for the animals initially. I was into mm. it for help. It eventually grew to that. You know, that's, everybody has a process. Of course. But I uh, wore my clothes, and um, I had a great time. And then she had me on a second time and a third time. Basically, the same thing about how I'm aging. I was in Harper's Bazaar for that, too. They, the women aging, whatever. But here's the point. It's not that I'm so special and I'm aging great. You know, every line, and I haven't done any surgery or fillers or Botox or anything. Maybe at 90, I will. I'm not ready yet. So I'm not putting anybody down for it. But I want to keep looking at my roadmap. So every line on your face is telling you what's going on internally. Mm. Like if I mango thing, which I'm, in, which I'm kind of right now, Jeffrey balances your blood sugar levels. But I don't know then the spleen pancreas thing kind of comes up that the 11s that everybody gets washed away but that's your spleen pancreas this is your small intestines and your liver this is uh, your adrenals and your kidneys this is uh, i had a double chin when i was a skinny little girl because that's constipation for your organs prolapsing internally from not going to the bathroom enough so uh it, it's it, i started out with those reasons and for health but you know it's all turned around and you can see everything going on. So I want to I want to look in the mirror and say, okay, you need to stop eating so many mangoes, Karen, or you need to meditate more to take care of the stress with your adrenals. You know? I love that perspective. I mean, I pretty much most of my girlfriends who are in their 30s get Botox already, and I haven't, but I do feel like you kind of miss out on like learning different layers of yourself and have actually never thought about it in that sense of like a little roadmap of being like, okay, this is telling me something that's going on with my body. It's not just happening because I'm old or aging. I wouldn't say 30 is old. <laughs> but people do. I mean, I know girls that are getting them in their twenties. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, um, and I'm not passing any judgment. You of know, course people not. People have to do and feel good. Right. But I feel that I'd like to, I, I consider myself a representative to younger women to say, there is another way hmm. you can do it. It's comfortable, but there's another way too, hmm. you know, and see what feels right for you because I don't think there's a right or a wrong. I think there's a process of what you're here for. And you're, you're going to bring in those experiences of what you need to learn. It didn't hurt though. Back in the sixties, that when I was modeling, I, one of the women that was a booker at, booker at Playboy, um, she got a facelift. And when they finished with her, she looked like a monster. Oh my I'm God. Seriously, screwed up her face so bad. And I never lost an image of that. So yeah, you know, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I want to see on. Totally. And it's like, you know, more economical to like do it from the inside <laughs> out. You know, you don't have to be spending all this money. Mm -hmm. Well, actually it is. And, and it's, I don't know, for me, it's very comfortable. Like I said, maybe at 85 or 90, I may change my mind, but right now I'm comfortable with just making sure I'm getting in the right foods and I love that. And, and then working out. You know? I just finished my green juice right before this podcast. So we're, we're on the same page. Okay. I just want to read this Instagram post that you just posted yesterday. Um, and it says, there's a reason that I'm not aging the same way the world has come to accept the reason, um, you might view this as a morbid thought, but I view everything I put in my body with the decision that I'm par participating in my life or my death. And I would just love for you to elaborate on that because we look at aging as this gloom and doom thing, you know, like I know women who are my mom's age in their mid sixties, having these like end of life crises that they're calling them and just so panicked. And I'm just like, I love your perspective on it because you seem to just be like thriving right now more than ever before. And we're so afraid to get older. And I just would love to hear your perspective on how that's different for you. We are not talked to, we're, you know, people kind of eat mindlessly, mm -hmm. you know, it's whatever 
do whatever is comfortable, whatever has been marketed to you, whatever you have time for. You know, I love people, they put their water in the microwave so they have more time, but what are you doing with more time? But it isn't just the, it isn't ignorance of people, it's the way the world is set up. Yeah. You know, the world is set up to start snatching away your life when you reach a certain age, it's especially women. They, it, it, it's part of our power. It, mm -hmm. it, it, you're, you take it away. So. I remember when I was in my 40s, they sent me some ARP stuff. <laughs> I was like, what's this for? <laughs> you know, if people are programmed, oh, I'm getting ARP and oh, I can get this cheaper and free because I'm old. I can do this. Mm -hmm. thing. And they do up. You can ride the bus cheaper. You get, you get all kinds of discounts and, because you're older. So it's being pounded into your head. And then everything on television, it's pushing it towards you. And it's pushing you that you'll have this big smile on your face if you have this medication or, you know, it just, the world is set up to go in the other direction and a negative, there's a negative gravitational pull. So for me, what I do in my work, it's all about helping you pull you up out of that quicksand, which you've been drawn into it. Isn't it? I don't think people are stupid or dumb. I think it starts at birth. They start programming us, mm -hmm. you know? With going to the doctor every week for needles or every month for you know we're programmed to to take that power that we have with knowing how to take care of it mothers are told uh, i just did something i haven't put it up yet this crisis in the country right now because there's no formula you know there's no formula for babies that well guess what get some nuts and make them you know mm -hmm. your baby's happier and put a little spirulina in it but people aren't thinking and i actually made a passion plea and i'll say it to you too you have a following, put some recipes up there for moms mm. to make some formula, you know, and, and show them how easy it is to do. So I was just thinking about that actually, because I saw this TikTok video and, you know, it's everyone's kind of spiraling because of what's happening with Roe versus Wade. And then also like the formula shortage. And I was thinking about when I was, you know, in school for nutrition, um, with T. Colin Campbell, I was like learning about formula and I was like, you know, I don't have children myself, so I don't know this firsthand, of course, from having to feed children, but I was researching what's in formula and every single formula, the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. And these moms are kind of convinced that this is the only alternative to feed their babies. If you can't do like produce breast milk. And it's just kind of like, what? And like, that's the way the world is set up. That's why I was, my husband listens to the news and I, I kept hearing the word crisis. I said, no, this isn't a crisis. We can turn this into a beautiful movement to get more moms on a natural path. That's not a crisis. It's a wake up call. Yes. And if we all bandwagon, we can help women to realize there's so much more power in what you can do in your kitchen yourself. And it's actually cheaper in the long run. Mm hmm yeah. And healthier. I mean, for your babies too, like, you know, you do look at research with babies, you know, having high fructose corn syrup and all of these additives at such a young age, like it leads to asthma, it leads to all these crazy food intolerances, autoimmune diseases. How many of the children do we see now are obese and people don't even look at it anymore. It's just the norm. Mm -hmm. People are getting larger and larger and, uh, you know, you go in your stores, the mannequins are larger and we're just accepting this. And People are like literally eating themselves to death. So I used to teach in my classes and I still do that, you know, you don't have to be as obsessive with it as I am, but you know, is this going to participate in my life or my death? Huh? And sometimes it may be that what is going to participate in your death and that's okay, but mm. at least you're constantly doing it. Right. And you can make conscious like, okay, I had five lives and six deaths today. Hmm, I better change that tomorrow. No. <laughs> yes, I love that. It, at least it's making you aware of you. You know, we're so outside of ourselves. Everything mm -hmm. is outside. Everybody's, everybody's telling you. I even tell people, you don't have to listen to me. Take something I say and then research it. You know, you don't have to take it blindly from me. But I do say, and I say it all the time, look at the person you're getting advice from. Are they manifesting what it is you're looking to do in your life? Some piece of it, because everybody doesn't have everything for you anyway. Mm -hmm. You know? My job that I feel when people take my classes or work with me one-on-ones, which I do, is to be like that mother bird and throw you out of the nest so you can fly on your own, so mm. that you never need somebody to tell you what you need to do again for yourself. I love that. You know, I always say that I've been working one-on-one -on -one with clients forever. I started as a private chef and now I do nutrition therapy and chefing. 
And I always tell a client, like when they first work with me, like my goal is that you are no longer my client. Like, I don't want to be one of those people that takes your money forever. And it's like feeding off of your illness. Like I want you to feel empowered for me to do my job and for you to move on with your life. And I love that you said that because there are a lot of people in the industry that kind of, I mean, the whole the whole like sick care is literally based on the idea that you're going to be someone's patient forever. And it's getting out of that idea of being like, no, I just need to learn what I need to learn. I need to become my own advocate and then I can move forward in my life. I need to tap back into my own vibration of what I know is right. Because what's right for you isn't right for everybody in every moment of their lives either. It's to touch on, experiment, try. And then, you know, like with my detox classes, what I teach people is, I'm there to put all this stuff in and give you a chance to see what it can feel like. And then it's up to you to find the path to continue to find that, to get that feeling again. Mm. And it will- I love this. You're speaking my language so much. This is so great. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay. Uh, what, what was that? When's your birthday? Um, it's February 18th. Oh, you're a, an Aquarian. I am. Aquarian. Uh, oh, yeah. You're the humanitarians of the world. I love that. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're doing it. What are you saying you're doing right now? Come on. True. That's on true. Back. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I've always been this way too. I've always just, you know, and also very extroverted, which really helps as well, you know, cause kind of just get out of your own way, which is like very, very <laughs> crucial to being humanitarian for sure. So like going to aging, I got a lot of questions regarding menopause yes so here's my take on that you know i don't believe god spirit universe whatever you believe in created us and then said at this particular age you're going to need some medication to make your life go forward it just Mm -hmm. doesn't make for me so apparently it's what we're doing to create this imbalance internally and so much of it has to do with blood sugar and you were talking about the fructose from baby we get addicted to the sugar you get it. Even I've been addicted and I'm talking about fruit and stuff throughout my lifetime. Mm -hmm. So it's blood sugar levels very often, but you know, when I went through menopause, (laughs) I actually took a pregnancy test because I didn't realize I was in menopause, but I'm getting a, (laughs) I'm in my fifties and I'm taking a pregnancy test, but, um, I went through menopause with no symptoms whatsoever. And um, I, nothing changed nothing changed whatsoever. In fact, I think I got more clarity, more focus because I was out of that part of the female goddess energy where I'm supposed to be reproducing. So the energy was replaced in another arena. So I, and I, I've taken a lot of hundreds of my clients through the same thing. So I give them things to start balancing blood sugar level, levels and stuff like that. And then changing the diet and you can get rid of all the hot pot. Like when we go, oh, when I go to bed at night, it really gets me. Well, what did you eat before you went to bed? Probably a chocolate bar or you know, something, and that's going to send your blood sugar levels up and it's going to heat you up. So I'm not mm. saying it's simple, but I'm saying it, it isn't an inevitability in my opinion. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I don't believe it's an inevitability. I don't, I just can't imagine creator or whatever doing that and say, now at 40, let's hope science has come along to help you move forward. Yeah, definitely. I had this awakening when I was young. So my grandmother went on medication, like hormone replacements when she was going through menopause. And then she got stage four ovarian cancer when she was older. And they're relating that to the, that medication that she was on that wasn't really well tested. And I have endometriosis and I'm just, I'm, I think had, I don't know, I'm, I'm not like claiming that as something that I own anymore, but it's, it's interesting when I think about that, because when I was in, like, when I was super young, before I was plant-based or before I knew any of this stuff, I was like, this makes no sense. Like menopause seems to be this very natural thing. And I was kind of raised with my mom and her friends and, and just, you know, my teachers and my grandma and everyone just is like this gloom and doom thing that happens to you. Like, get ready. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> like you're getting old. Like, and then it's like this thing that's just supposed to rock your world. Yeah. No, I, I don't believe it's never enough. And it's not just me. I've worked with thousands of women over the years that come to that. And with your endometriosis right now, the, the webbing and all, there are things and, and that can you can change that with too, I'm sure you know, but um, it takes a real consistency 
for about a year or two. It takes anywhere from seven months to a year mm -hmm. to change a relatively healthy body around. It takes a year to two. Uh, I used to have a huge growth in my throat. They, they could have called a thyroid or, thyroid or uh, Hashimoto or goiter or whatever. Right. It, it took me three and a half, almost four years to get rid of it. But I was so consistent, it was gone. And I have a friend that's a medical doctor. And at the time, uh, she said, I've never seen anything like this, Karen. But I did the systemic enzymes. I was just very consistent. It took me, I didn't expect it to go away overnight. Uh, you're even younger. So I know that, and I could throw some stuff into you later if you want to talk about it. They could help push that along even faster. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, totally. And so, okay, so you're 100% raw vegan, right? So does any part of you like ever lean towards cooked foods at all? Or do you just like, are, um, I, you know, I've gone through a few periods like that in, in my process. I hate the word journey now. It's so <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this journey. Um, and I, I, um, I, I have gone back and forth a few times and actually kind of recently when I, the whole world turned around on me for a moment, for about four or five years ago, everything changed in my life. Mm. And, it wasn't that I was sitting down eating cooked meals. I mean, I would taste a little something like that. Because, I, I, you know, when you're like me, you can't do much of anything. Mm. When your system is like mine, there's not, you can't do a lot of anything. And I was doing little bits here and there. But what it has done for me in the past 40 years, my little backward steps is it helps to propel me forward faster because I go, oh, wow. You know, hmm, hmm. It's like when I just went through it this past time. When I looked in the mirror, it was like a veil had been pulled over my face. I just didn't have the glow and the, my skin and my eyes didn't look the same. And I was like, okay, let's throw this out. <laughs> I told you I'm vain. But it, it, uh, I've gone back a few times with the, the difference. When I was a meat eater and became a vegetarian, it was like, oh my God, I'm going to the bathroom. This feels wonderful. And then I became a, a vegan and it was like, really? This is how you can feel? And then I became uh, raw food and it was like, I felt I could walk on water and I still do. I mean, I just don't see or feel things the same. So am I tempted by my husband isn't even a hundred percent plant-based. He's 85, 90%. He eats some fish sometimes, not in our house, but he makes all these plant-based cooked things. He, he, Target has so many great frozen things now for, mm. you know, for people. And I have no desire. It, it just, it doesn't appeal to me at all, but. Well, that's so inspiring. <laughs> I love that. I, okay. So I go on these like interesting journeys of going raw. Like I'll be like, I'm going to go raw for like a week. And I don't know. I have such a hard time. Like by the time I'm on day four or five, I just feel so ravenous and so hungry. And like, I want a potato <laughs> so bad. You need to do my detox first. Okay. You need to do my detox first and we'll talk about it. You know, maybe okay. you'll do it. we record you to something because. The thing of it is, you don't go from A to Z overnight. It's yeah. like everybody's all this fasting and juice fasting. You're eating steak one day and juice fasting. Your body doesn't recognize that change. In mm -hmm. fact, that's what I told you in my live yesterday. I think one of the reasons that it's lasted for me so long is I crossed bridges. I didn't just jump there. Yeah, so so totally. These young raw food uh, women that I know of that were a thousand percent, they have a million followers, or they do, and then all of a sudden, this is bad for me, and they start eating meat. You know, they jump yes. all the way back. There's quite a few. And it, it's, it's just part of the process. They just didn't give themselves. Mm -hmm. So you didn't learn yourself along the way. You read what somebody else said was a good thing to do. You jumped on and did it. And I'm not saying that can't work. But your brain and body aren't in sync. Right. So, no, it's not. You're, you're doing it for a week because you heard it was good. You haven't gotten your body there. And you haven't crossed the bridges. And that's what I really think is important when I work with people is find just so you learn about you, what you need, how you work, you know, um, and then you cross another bridge and then you cross. And sometimes you take a few steps backwards, but you're going to learn more from those backward steps. You don't have to go all the way back to eating raw meat. <laughs> you know, just figure out know. what you can <laughs> That is so funny. It's so true. <laughs> you allowed stuff and a lot has to do with this age group too it's it's super speed everything is done right away mm -hmm. you know yeah because you have in front of you so it's getting for me it's helping people 
to slow down and enjoy the process, not have the label. Well, I'm a raw foodist. I'm a high raw foodist. I'm a this, I'm a that. It's not about the label. Right. Cause then and that puts pressure, right? It puts like unnecessary pressure and then the pressure builds up and then you can bust. About food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that pressure about food and yeah. people make such a huge um, part of their lives. You know, I, please don't anybody get mad at me, but I don't hang around with a lot of vegans or raw foodists. In fact, most of my friends eat meat and do other things. You know why? Because we talk about other things other than food. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's other things other than food. So mm-hmm. I think people need to learn to tune in and it, it's not easy because there's so many distractions mm-hmm. and uh, figure out what's right for you in this moment. Yeah, jump on a process, your process or my process or something. Jump on a process, learn some new stuff, but don't take it as this is the God all end all. This is the way I have to be forever because that can be very overwhelming too. Even you trying your raw foods for four days, it's work, it's different. It's not what you're used to emotionally, physically and everything else. And then it becomes overwhelming. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. And People continually, I don't overwhelm myself about anything. I really don't. I, even when I first started being a vegetarian and pot wasn't legal, then I don't do any pot now and it's for spiritual reasons, but pot wasn't even legal. I was a model, you know, and everybody smoked pot. You woke up in the morning, you had a joint and people go, oh my goodness, Karen, you're smoking pot and you're a vegetarian. Yep, that's right. That's what I need to do right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I love that. So People have to find their own process, be mm-hmm. comfortable in that process. Take in as much information as you can, but don't expect to go from A to Z overnight. Nothing happens. Well, they're starting to do it now. They're trying to make, you know, they're formulating everything and they're growing animals in the laboratory. I mean, they're taking away all the spirit, God-given universe stuff. They're pulling it in. Man knows better. Yeah. Well, I mean, man's been trying to play God for forever now. So this is just the next evolution of that. You no, know, this is my favorite joke. I used to go, what, do you know the difference between God and a doctor? What? God, he's a doctor. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is a really good, that's a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to have to use that for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I love the idea of like a slow evolution. Cause that's what happened for me. I was vegetarian for five years and then I went back and I was eating meat again for whatever. And then, um, I became plant-based or I became like pescatarian again and then vegetarian and then plant-based. And then ever once I went plant-based last time, I was like, I'm never going back to eating meat, eating dairy. Like the idea of eating dairy to me just sounds so repulsive. Like, it's not even something that's like, someone would be like, Oh, doesn't this cheese pizza look great? And I'm like, no, <laughs> Like literally nothing about that looks like food to me, but okay, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I love that. And for people listening who feel overwhelmed by all the choices out there, I always say to like, go with a baseline of ethics. Like, I think there's a lot of fad trends out there, like the keto diet or the carnivore diet. And if it's like, if it doesn't ethically feel right or spiritually aligned with who you are, and you're just doing it because someone told you that it's a good idea, or you've seen someone lose weight off of it, it doesn't mean that it's the right thing necessarily for you. Absolutely. We're in sync here, girl. I love that. (laughs) So I have a question. Um, do you drink alcohol? No, I don't. And it's not that, uh, well, I don't drink alcohol because I did. I did my share you know, yeah. in my, uh, but it, it ages you. Mm-hmm. It converts to system and it's literally aging you. It's literally eating away and feeding the yeast and everything that's going to make you older. You ever notice women even age from it worse than men? Uh, so no, I don't drink. And it's, it's a conscious choice. My dog wants to get out. Can I run over? Yeah, no problem. I'll pause. Um, You know, I just, what I would say to people is um, chocolate cake or alcohol, have the chocolate cake or have, you know, because it's going to do the same thing to your body. So no, I don't drink alcohol. Plus I, that's the other reason I don't do any kind of marijuana. I don't like not feeling like myself. Mm. I've done enough work on myself that I like who I am and how I operate and what I do. And I don't, want to be anybody else and those things do change you they change how you think they change how you respond to things how you respond to people uh, so for me 
But I certainly have uh, two of my restaurants. We had liquor licenses. You know, I had a bar. I had a beautiful bar, a green restaurant. My husband, we have a bar in my home. I serve people alcohol. Mm. I, but no, personally, do not drink at all. Yeah, I definitely just wanted to ask that because you are just so vibrant. And I, you know, I grew up in drinking culture. I've worked in restaurants. I worked back of house chef culture, which is like all of the <laughs> drugs and alcohol you could ever need. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm, I'm always very interested in to hear other people's perspective of alcohol, just because it's so embedded in our culture. And I think it definitely is a little rebellious to not partake in that. Um, and oh, since it's uncomfortable you know, if you're not having a drink. So long ago, I adapted where I would get a glass and put something in it just so it looked like I had alcohol so people would leave me alone. Now I don't even do that. But um, yeah. yeah, the world drinks and the world, it, it shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. And it, yeah, and, and it causes like anxiety and like all these things. I think if there wasn't so much of a culture to like escape, I think we'd be able to, and I drink now and then now, but I think it would just be, we'd be more aware in general if we weren't so focused well, on escaping. Takes away your awareness. Absolutely. It puts you in a, another mindset. So yeah, no, I don't, but I did till I was 40. So you got some time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> got a decade. <laughs> Um, okay. I also wanted to ask you, since you do live in Illinois and there's a lot of, there's just a lot of areas, especially in the States where it's really hard to get healthy, organic, fresh food. So, and I get a lot of questions about this on TikTok, and I'm just wondering what your, um, take on this is for people who maybe want to go raw, want to be healthier, but feel like there's not options near them. Um, and since you live in the Midwest, I feel like it's the perfect place for that kind of question. You know, I don't think it's that big of a problem any longer like it mm. used to be. If you, if you, you know, it's more about the intention of what you're going to put in, of what you're going to give up, not just what you're going to put in. So I think if you start out by giving up dairy and red meat, all of a sudden it would become more aware to you where you could shop and eat. Uh, and I have to say, in the Midwest, we have like Jewel and yeah. some big. They're all carrying plant-based food now. Even Target has plant-based food yes. and frozen. Dairy. Walmart there's no place because it's a it's the end thing now and they're gonna go you know where the people need so I think if you open your eyes and look it's not a desert like it used to be 50 years ago when I started it was very difficult when I started by the way like I was doing tofu then uh, with, uh, with my kids and I had to go to a, a, a Korean or it was a Japanese market where you had to go with a bucket and they filled the bucket with water and they were making the tofu fresh in the place. It wasn't all packaged and everything. It was a lot more difficult. So I don't see where people can have a lot of excuses anymore. I think it's just the awareness of what you're looking for. So I feel like people like you and myself, you know, I, I do on some of my YouTubes, I show all the different foods you can get at Jewel and Target or the regular super. You don't have to go to, you know, a Whole Foods or whatever, just... You can make it work and everybody's got a phone now. So you can certainly look up how to make stuff. It's so inexpensive to feed yeah. yourself. I actually totally agree with you. And I get frustrated with these comments because, you know, I feel like there's so many, not only just grocery stores like Target and Walmart have so many options, but also there's delivery services now where you can get like daily harvest or you can get CSA boxes shipped to you. Um, and I do think that people like to put excuses in front of them in order to stay where they are instead of being able to be, yeah, to be comfortable. Exactly. But I just wanted to know your, your input on that because I feel the same. I always say, well, before we're going to add in, what are you going to give up? You know, because there's only so much room. Mm. so I'd rather see you you say make a commitment and just for a week not forever yeah you know because that's going to give me a week and then let's talk about adding some of this in you know but the thing of it is when you stop putting all the negativity in your brain opens up we really know how to do what's right it's just covered up with all the garbage we're taking in consistently. yeah not it's true and all that information on social media that we're looking at first thing in the morning right <laughs> Look at any of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so true. Okay. I had another question about, I saw like on your website, you have this spa, which I actually love that you went kind of from like the restaurant world to now the like health and wellness, like spa world, which is like, so up my alley. And I saw that you offer colonics at your spa and I've gotten tons of questions. I actually started doing colonics, um, 
I think like six months ago, and it's been pretty transformational for me. So I love to hear your experience with clonics and just kind of maybe, you know, just a little bit of information about that. So people can kind of. I'm actually a trained colon therapist also, although I won't give you or anybody else a colonic. I learned to do it for myself. Mm -hmm. My mother actually took me to, a, because I was constipated all the time. There yeah. was a chiropractor on the west side of Chicago, Michael Jackson's family used to go there. And she took me for my first colonic. I must've been 14 or 15 years Oh my old. gosh, crazy. Oh, um, yeah. And um, it, it started to help me. You know, she only did it a couple of times. And then later when I became involved with Dr. Wigmore, uh, I would, at her place in Boston or any of you went to part of the detox and part of mine also. I don't allow anybody to fast without doing colon cleansing, without doing um, enemas or colonics or something because I feel it can be dangerous. And uh, so we had to do them every day for a couple of weeks. And so needless to say, I got used to it. My whole system changed everything. Uh, it was a beautiful thing. I had a lot of emotional change because people don't realize that it's not just the food. Like sometimes uh, we'll have clients when they release a big thing of mucus, they just start crying. They can't help it. And it's something that they've been hanging on to for years and years and years. Emotionally, it can get stuck. And my experience goes even deeper than that. But um, I'll, I, I will talk about it in a minute. But uh, I think it is one of the most necessary. They've been doing it since Pythagoras. They were doing it in his vegetarian village. They were doing gourds mm -hmm. and reeds been around forever and doctors used to actually recommend it until the age of pharmaceuticals came in and then it didn't pay to send somebody to go get cleaned out to go to the bathroom so um, for me I think it's one of the safest ways to stay close to balance it's very difficult with the way the world is set up now because what goes in must come out and if it doesn't where did it go and what's it doing to you and if you're eating five times a day, you should be making five times a day. If you're eating three times a day, you should be making three times a day. It's that simple. What goes in must come out. And if it doesn't, where to go and what's it doing? Uh, we are entering our, uh, we're not entering the transverse or the ascending. So even having one colonic is a nice start. Mm -hmm. But people are carrying anywhere from six to 30 pounds of fecal matter around in them. And it's yeah. responsible how you think, how you feel, how you respond. So I opened up the third clonic center in Chicago. We had two going at the time, but nobody was doing the um, hydrosome. Everybody was doing the upside down water bottle. It, it Cause we're talking eighties, nineties. Right? Yeah. And everybody was doing the upside down bottle. And I wanted for, I just wanted to feel more sanitation. And I had in San Diego. I used to go to optimal health Institute. Okay. You know where that is? No, I used to go there to year 15 years you've got one of the greatest resources for raw foods and cleansing and detoxing right there in, in lemon grove san okay. diego i went twice a year for 15 years that was my vacation for myself and we would do colonics every day there too uh and it's just i wish more people would understand the importance and even if you're not going to do a colonic then you need to do enemas and i'm not into coffee enemas but enemas you need to if, if mm -hmm. you're doing a, for a detox fasting you need to be pulling the stuff out faster as your body is healing. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of um, I, Like I said, I went to school to learn to do it because I was buying the machines for my place and I know how to work everything in my place. And I give them to myself. I will say at this point, uh, if I do a, a, a fast, I won't do them every day of a fast any longer because I've been doing it for so many years. Mm -hmm. And I feel like out of dirt, you rub it off, you could, but if you keep rubbing, you, you can go too far with it. But I've been doing it for 50 years and I just don't do it as much as I used to, but I think everybody else should. Right. I love that. You got any kind of a tummy, you're full of shit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I was always really nervous to get clonics. And then I did this like really deep parasite cleanse for the first two and a half months of the year. And I had like tapeworms come out of me and like the craziest stuff come out of me during the clonic. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been holding on to like all of this stuff. You know, it's just kind of like, you think that you're healthy and then you get a clonic and you're like, whoa, there's a lot going on, on in there. So it's, it's, it's not a downer. It may sound like it at first but uh so I was at Optimal Health Institute it was probably the fifth year I'd gone there fourth year yeah and they had a massage therapist there and I would always tell people because over here where my cecum is I didn't realize it was I never wanted to be touched 
not romantically, not with a massage. I just didn't want to be touched there. And I didn't know why. And, and I really say, all right, give me a massage. Just don't touch me there. Well, she was so good. She was giving me the massage and she touched me there. And all of a sudden I started crying hysterically. I mean, I couldn't stop. And all of these memories of my child molestation came back, right? Mm. Afterwards, because it's good to do a massage before colonic. I went and had a colonic right afterwards. And this thing came out of me. It was like the colon therapist said, I've never seen anything like this. But I believe it would have been responsible for my death somewhere down the line. I was hanging on to that pain. I was acting like everything was okay. But right. I was hanging on to that pain internally and didn't even remember it. And I came back to Chicago and spoke with an aunt. And you know, back in the 40s, you didn't talk about it like you do now. And she says, yes, this did happen to you. So I think it's, it's important to heal your body emotionally doing it as much as getting the old dead food out. Yeah, totally. I started having all these emotions too. My first one, like so many emotions just from having endometriosis and all that comes with that. So anyone listening, if you're afraid to get a clonic, just go do it. It's totally worth it. <laughs> okay. So I do a speed round at the, like the last couple of minutes of all my podcasts, basically just going to ask you some random questions. Um, so just tell me the first thing that's on your heart. No pressure. Okay. Okay. We'll start easy. We'll start easy. Are you a night owl or an early bird? I sleep four and a half hours a night. I get up, I go, I don't need a lot of sleep because you only need sleep to repair the body. So for the past 20 years, I sleep four and a half hours. So I go to bed about 1231. I get up at five. Oh my gosh. I have, I had a, a chef instructor when I was in culinary school in San Francisco, like 10 years ago, and she was a raw foodist and she said the same thing. And I always thought she was nuts because, you know, I'm eating all this French food. I was at Le Cordon Bleu and she was like the, the black sheep of the culinary school, you know, and me and my girlfriends were like, how does she only sleep four and a half hours a night? So I love that there's more than just what? her. This is because I have all this time to do stuff. Mm, I love that. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so inspired by you. Okay. What, well, where's your favorite place in the whole world? India. India. Oh, I love that. Uh, what are your three must have beauty products? Um, uh, castor oil, um, black eyeliner and, uh, castor oil and Irish moss. So I use the Irish moss and castor oil on my skin and a black eyeliner into my eyebrows. And does that count? <laughs> Yeah, totally. Totally. I, I'm going to have to ask you about the moss because that sounds really interesting. I know you talk about it a lot and it's on your website, right? Yeah, it's pure collagen you're putting on your face and then your hair, thickens your hair, everything. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get my hands on that for sure. Um, what is your favorite way to unwind? Um, my favorite way to unwind is... Um, <laughs> I, could, I was about to tell a lie and say sitting in front of my fireplace reading a book organizing cleaning and organizing, organizing? That's, that's, I love <laughs> if my daughter if my daughter and husband say that I'm crazy I love to clean and organize my my daughter said that could be another business for me but you see there's a reason for that also because I would tell people I tell people doing my detoxes in my classes the cleaner you get the more organized organization you need around you. As you do it in here, you need it around you. And even if you're a neat, clean person, you keep taking it to new heights. Yes. So I, I like to organize. Oh, that's my husband. He like, he like, can't stop. I'm like all tired at the end of the night. And he's like reorganizing our whole refrigerator. I'm like, what is wrong with, maybe it's like an Illinois thing. I don't know. <laughs> huh? When's his birthday? He's a Leo. Um, It's August 7th. Yeah, my, my son was August 2nd. Yeah, we do have that trait. My, um, it's a fire sign. Mm. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, you just got to keep it, keep it busy. Okay. Um, who or what are you inspired by right now? Oh, <laughs> Rita Moreno. I just saw an interview with her because she's 90 years old. And she is, I, I, I pulled her up and looked at everything about her. And there's a guy that was on TikTok or somebody sent it through who's a hundred years old and who just won a race um, in Pittsburgh. See, I'm looking to the people that are already there because there's not a lot of people in front of me, <laughs> you know, mm. that I do to be like, they're all you young guys and I love it. And I'm so happy that all these young warriors doing it, but I'm not a thousand, I'm inspired that you're doing it. And I know I can learn from everybody, but I'm looking for the people that are older than me that are 
vibrant and healthy. And so Rita Moreno is one, she's absolutely unbelievable. There's no way you know she was 92. And uh, so what else inspires me? And I, I look forward to like, I just started the whole sugar detox I'm teaching. I'm looking forward to teaching. I love to teach. So where my restaurant is next door, I'm building a classroom also. Because mm. I need to teach. Maybe you'll come in and do a class with us or something. Or I would love me. to. That would be so amazing. I know now that I, I like didn't really know about your restaurant. I was just in Chicago um, doing, on my book tour last year. But yeah, we'll have to come come back when we yeah. come to Chicago. We'll to back to the family and um, Yeah, so yeah. sweet. I would love that. That'd be so amazing. Okay. What advice do you have for young women? Advice for young women. Oh yeah. Do you know what? Um, I think the most important thing for us to do as women in general is to tap back into our goddess energy. Stop mm -hmm. being so yang in so many ways, you know, that we have to do this. To, the female goddess energy is the strongest energy on the planet. We birthed the world. Without us, there's nothing. So we have to realize that we can have that power without pulling and being masculine. We, we can have that power, that loving, nurturing, non-judgmental power, because the world doesn't have enough of it, right? Everything is so much yang energy. Everything is about and separation and pull apart. We as women, we bring everything together. So I want you to remember and do everything you can to tap into and, and nurture and, and flourish with your goddess energy. We are the ones that are supposed to be making things balanced. Mm. And there's not enough of us doing that. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> if, you, oh, if you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? Um, looking for division and separation finding the joy and goodness in everybody. I'll give you a real quick example. There was a guy in my uh, spa and he had on a, um, and I don't want to get political, but he had on a t-shirt that had two guns on it and it said death to the empty photos. And obviously his girlfriend was in a colonic <laughs> and he had a typical trucker hat and you could tell he was probably a hundred, blah, blah, blah. Not that I have a problem with them. And he was sitting there. So I went up to him and I said, so what does your t-shirt mean? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. And now my receptionist is African-American, Black, and so am I. And you could tell maybe he wasn't comfortable with that either. Um, and I said, no, come on, tell me what is it. What, what does your T-shirt mean? And he said, uh, well, we shouldn't be letting all these immigrants in the country. And I said, okay, I don't agree with you. I said, but you know what? The way you are with my dog, I've never seen a more loving, wonderful person. Do you have animals at home? So we found something, some way to mm. come together. And that's what I want people to do, to find a way to come together, not separate us more. You know, there was a young girl in here uh, a few weeks ago, and she kept saying, well, I'm a high raw, I'm a high raw. Well, why do we have to separate? We're all, you know what I'm saying? It's the labels. And it's, if we could just find ways to, to, um, to find the best part of what I don't agree with you, but there's a lot about you that I could. I mean, there are people that come in here that are raw food that don't like my dog. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it, it's looking for that joy and what we can learn and what we don't agree with in the next human being because that's what we're here from to learn from each other we're not supposed to all be the same it would be a very boring world if we were i'd be bored to death mm -hmm. totally yeah i'd like to see people find a way to look for what i can agree with in you we can talk about what we don't like but there's something about us that we can, we're humans we can find a way to connect yes Absolutely. And I think it's also so important to give people space to change their mind and to grow. And, you know, there's a lot of, I think, rhetoric on social media of like who you are in this moment is who you've always been. And it's, you know, there's no room to change and you're canceled and whatever. And I think it's so important to give people the space if they did do something wrong to understand and to be like, okay, how can you be a better person? Cause you're right. It just causes so much division. And yeah, I'm totally with you. I feel like as a society, we need more grace with each other. You, you put it perfectly. Absolutely. I love that. Okay, just a couple more questions. Um, if you were stranded on an island and could only bring three things, what would you bring? My dog. Yes. I guess I should bring them too, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're <laughs> obvious. You don't have to add them. They're okay. obvious. Okay. Oh, what three things would I bring with me? I would probably bring... Um, some way that I could listen to music. Music mm. is so important. So I would have some form of music. I mean, I can't do half the stuff on the internet, but I can always figure out how to do music. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I would have music um, for food. I 
would either have watermelon or mushrooms. I'm not sure which I would prefer because I, I love them both. Um, and, a, and well, a good book wouldn't do me because I could read it. What would I want to read over and over again? Um, what would be that third thing? Music? Well, I, I don't like to be cold and wet, so I probably need something to cover myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I book. love it. <laughs> I love it. I've actually never <laughs> asked a guest that. And I was like, this could be really interesting to see what you would bring. And then just two more questions. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, do you know, I was actually in a book. Uh, I, I, it's written in one of the books about me. They asked me that in like 30, 40 years. And I'm mm. sorry, and I say the same thing now that I said that I should, I should read it to you. What I said was, I, I wouldn't change myself to make other people feel comfortable, which I did initially. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Who I am to make, especially other women when I was growing, you know, because I went to eight grammar schools, four high schools. So I always had to morph into something to make people like me, you know, and, um, and because I am very outgoing and out, you know, and I know I can make people uncomfortable if they're not comfortable with themselves. So I would morph into something to make somebody feel more comfortable. Right. You know, and I wouldn't do that anymore. It's, it is what it is. And yeah. I tell the old person, don't do that. Just be who you are. And if they can't accept it, then they shouldn't be around you. Love it. And then final question. I ask everyone the same thing at the end of the end of the show. Do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Absolutely. I always say the same thing at the end of every interview. If you don't serve your body the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where will you live? Mm, mic drop. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it for our episode. I hope you found some golden nuggets of inspiration. Thank you so much to our guest, Karen. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, if you guys love the show, like I said in the beginning, please send it to someone who needs to hear this message. It's just like helps the show so much. And not only that, the show is here just to spread the love, just to spread the information. So it's free to do, just spread it wide and spread it far. Also, if you love the show, I would appreciate a review on Apple Podcasts so much. The reviews help get the word out about the show. And yeah, you guys stay hydrated, wear your non-toxic sunscreen and um, stay safe out there because it's getting super, super hot. And we all just got to make sure we take care of ourselves extra this time of year because our body really needs a little bit of extra loving. Okay, you guys, I will see you next week. Bye.